Hi everyone, my name is Mark Moikins. In a previous video that I made, I showed you how to create a menu that slides out from the left. In this video, I'm going to show you another way to create a menu, but it's a little bit different. The menu is actually going to be behind the main view, and you're actually just going to be sliding your whole screen to the right to expose a menu underneath it. A lot of the same principles, but it's a little bit different. All right, let's get started. Here I have a single view application, and let me just resize this so we can see the whole thing here. There we go. And again, I'm going to embed it into a navigation controller. So when we use the menu, we can have we have a way to get back. All right, there we go. And on this menu, I need to create a button. It's going to be the same as like the other project. We need a button in the upper uh, upper left corner. So when you click it, uh, it shows a menu. The whole view is going to be shifting to the the right, and it'll show a menu right here. So let's add that button. We want a bar button item. And I'm going to give it an icon. There we go. So this will be the button that we click. Just give it a title. This is my app. OK, now this main view here, let's give it a color. This is the, the color of our menu. This will actually be the menu. It's not going to be your main UI where you put all your controls or your welcome message. It's actually going to be the menu that exists behind all of that. So let's add a button for one of your menu items. Maybe it navigates the user to uh, view two. And let's change that color because that kind of blends in a little bit. Give it a red. And you might have another menu item below that. And that sends them to view three. OK, let's add some constraints on these guys. OK, good. So we have our menu. And then let's give it at least one view to navigate to. There we go. And maybe we'll give this uh, the same background color. Or we'll give it a, a lighter background color. Yeah, there we go. We'll change this one to darker because we don't want our menu to be the same color as the, the main view. All right, that looks good. So now, now we want to click on a button and move our view over, but we don't have a view on there. So let's add that. This will be our main view right here. We'll add some constraints there. Okay, now on our main view, uh, let's give that our theme color here, which is this color, and maybe we have a welcome message on there. There we go, and we'll just center that. All right, there's our app. Okay, so how are we going to, when we click on this button, how are we going to move this, this view over so we can see the menu? We're going to do it the same way we did in the other project, where all we're going to be manipulating are the constraints of this main view here. OK, so let's, let's create some outlets for those constraints. Now, in order to find, define these constraints, what I find is easiest, because you can look through here, and you might have many, many constraints on here. I mean, looking at this, it's actually it's pretty easy. You have your leading constraint and the trailing constraint. But if it's uh, to make sure that those are the leading and the trailing constraints of this main view, you can click on uh, the, the size inspector and go here. And you know this is the trailing and the leading constraint for that object. So if I double click on that, it's going to highlight it over here. So there's my trailing constraint. There we go. Whoops. It's in the wrong location there. Let's get it right up on top. Okay, I'm just going to call this trailing constraint. Okay, now we need a constraint for our leading constraint. So same way, I'm going to click on the view. I'm going to find its leading leading constraint right here. Double click it. Find it over here. Then I'm going to right click and drag it over to my code. And again, I'll use the same 
naming convention, I'll just call this leading constraint. Okay, and then I need an action outlet when I click this button, because I'm going to change those constraints. Well, let's change this to action, and we'll call it show menu. All right. Okay, so when I click that, that menu button, basically what I want to do is I want to take this leading constraint, and I'm going to move it over to about here. So that's probably, I'm going to, let's start with 100 and see how that looks. Constant equals 100. And for my trailing constraint, I want to use the same number because uh, I, I want to move the whole view over um, without you know squeezing it or changing the, the, the width of the window. So for my trailing constraint, you don't want to make it a 100 because the trailing constraint starts starts uh, uh, from a different side, right? So if I change it to 100, it's actually it's going to push my view over this way. Uh, so I need to make it a negative number so it moves the view over this way. So let's make that a negative number there. Oops. All right, there we go. And let's run that and see how that works. Okay. Now here, here's something interesting uh, that I noticed. I've had I've had this happen before in Xcode. Sometimes the, the the objects are out of order, and you can see. I think this is a bug because you can see over here that uh, the view, our main view, is actually on top of view two. Like view two is at the the, the lowest uh, in in terms of uh, uh, your z order. So. The one way I found to correct this is just to take the view and and move it around. So here, you know, I have it underneath, and then I move it back. Now it's back on top. Run it again. Yeah, there we go. That looks right. Again, I it must be a bug. I, I have no idea why that happens. Okay, so when we click this, we want the whole view to shift over and expose our menu, and there it is. All right, so that looks good. 100 looks about right. Actually, that looks pretty dead on. That looks pretty centered. Okay, good. So let's work with that. Now, what we want to do is we have an opening, but we need to be able to click it again and close it, right? So to be able to do that, we need a variable to tell us if it's if the menu is open or not. So let's create that. Menu showing. It's going to default to false because when the application starts, the menu will not be showing. And then we'll check it when we click on the button. If the menu is showing, we want to close it. And when the menu is closed, these two properties right here are zero. Else. else we're going to open it. And let me just get the indenting right here. There we go. Okay, is there really a problem? No, there isn't. Okay, just took a little time to catch up here. So now let's test that, see, if, see how that works. No, it doesn't. Oh, you know why? <laughs> okay. <laughs> So when you come in here, the menu showing is always false. We need to toggle that value. And this this amp, uh, exclamation point that basically says, "Give me the opposite value." So if it's true, it's going to return false. If it's false, it's going to return true. There we go. All right, much better. I like to add animation to mine. So when I click this button, I want to see it slide out. Right now, it's just jumping, jumping over to the right and jumping back to the left. So let's add some animation. And we're going to animate when it slides out to the right. So it's just this part right here. Uh, actually, uh, like I said in a previous video, you can't animate the constants. These properties, constant property, is not animatable. But I can call a function which will reposition everything in the view and you can animate that function. 
I'll show you how that's done here. Okay, we're going to say UI view, animate, and we're just going to go with a simple animation here. Time, I usually find 0 0.3 works for most, most things. And our animation will go right in here. And in here, we want self.view layout if needed. And you can see this function lays out the subviews immediately. So we change some values uh, that affects the subviews in this, in this main root view. And then if we call this, this will reposition everything. But it'll do it in a, it'll animate it when it repositions it. So let's see how that looks. Yeah, it looks good. Slides right on, right on over. And then it snaps back when I close it. Uh, you know what, I think I like the animation when I close it too. Yeah, so let's, let's do that. And what I can do is I'm just gonna take this out of here. I'm gonna put it outside the if statement because we want it to animate whether it opens or closes. There we go. There, how do you like that? Beautiful. Okay, now there's one other thing. This is good for like a purely, like strictly flat design. Personally, I think it looks a little bit better when you can see that this, this edge is, it gives the illusion of that it's a, above your menu. So we're going to, we're gonna add a drop shadow to it to give it that illusion that it's a little bit higher up than your menu. And to do that, we're going to need an outlet to our main view here. And we'll just call it main view. Okay. And like I've said in other videos, every view actually has drop shadow already built in. It's just by default, the opacity of it is zero, so it doesn't show. So all we really need to do is just show the opacity, crank it up to one, so it becomes solid. And let's just do that here. Uh, what do we want? Main view. And it's on the la uh, layer. And it's the shadow opacity. Like I said, by default, it's zero. So we're just going to change it to one so you can see it. And there you go. So you can see there's a drop shadow here. Uh, it gives it a little bit a little bit more depth. Th this is fine. You see how wide that drop shadow is? That's your shadow radius. Right now it's, it defaults to three. I'm gonna change that to a 10, kind of make it, so it gives it a little bit deeper look. Uh, if I can spell here, layer. Yeah, let's make that 10. There we go. It looks a little bit deeper now. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something new. If you have any other ideas or you played around with this before, please feel free to leave comments and share the information. I, I love learning from other people. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, consider subscribing. I try to come out with a couple videos every week of handy tips like this. Thank you very much. Have a good night.